Hello everybody, my name is Flavio and thank you guys for tuning into the channel The House of Collectibles. Today we have a very special video if you guys can't tell already. Um, but firstly, I just want to say thank you guys for all of the support to the channel. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment down below on this video or other videos that we've made in the past. Um, so yeah, we have a great figure to unbox here. I've had this figure for quite some time and I have not gotten around to unboxing it. And what better time to do so with the latest announcement of the 2.0 of this figure. So this is the DX-17, the Darth Maul from the Star Wars Phantom Menace with the speeder bike. Um, this is brand new sealed, so I don't know what took me so long to get this out and onto the, to the display, but um, with that new announcement of the latest figure with the advancements and the uh, updated head sculpts and all of that stuff, it has driven me to finally make a video for you guys so you guys can compare and contrast for yourselves. Is it worth getting the new uh, figure or is it better to just go on the aftermarket and pick this or the DX16 without the speeder? So we're going to take a look at that today. And yeah, we're going to try to be as quick as possible. I'm trying to make a shorter format videos for you guys, but I don't want to leave um, any little bits of information that you might want um, to know um, for yourself. So without further ado, let's get this figure unboxed. And this is what the front of the box will look like. You guys have Darth Maul riding his Sith speeder right there in the front with the gray angles for the normal Star Wars releases for Hot Toys. You have the deluxe version sticker there with the exclusive accessory, which is the Sith speeder. You have the Sideshow exclusive foil sticker right there above. And then down below, you have the DX-17 Darth Maul um, to notify you which version you have picked up of the DX model. So we're going to take this slip cover right off, and then you are revealed with some more beautiful artwork here underneath that slip cover. And this is all done in like a rough kind of textured um material here kind of like a book style um cover and you guys have Darth Maul there with his lightsaber and it's just all darkened in this nice red fashion you got the Star Wars logo in a red uh foil kind of um color there as well again with the Darth Maul with Sith Speeder DX17 down below it is just nice red treatment all around. You have Star Wars there on the side, more legal information on the back, and then down here with the Disney and DX-17 insignia. This box will then flip open like so, and then you guys have this nice, kind of almost like his... Uh, tattoo paintings all over his forehead and face um, kind of design all throughout the box. You guys are then hit with a Darth Maul and a read up for the character. And if you guys would like to pause and read that really quick, go ahead. You'll also get this nice engraved metal card, I guess, with Darth Maul's face on it and the Hot Toys logo down there as well. Um, DXs, they always really throw in something that I think a lot of people don't really end up using, but, um, this is cool. This is a metal card. I don't know what you would have use for it, but if you are like a diehard Darth Maul fan, I'm sure you would enjoy that. And now we are getting our first looks at the figure here. You guys have this, um, insert that you guys can take right off, but you guys can see the figure in here. And then the exclusive piece there and then the extra head sculpt. We are now going to take the Darth Maul out and see everything that you get with the figure. All right, guys. And these are just some of the accessories that you get with your Darth Maul figure. I say some because we still have to take a look at that speeder bike. But nonetheless, starting off here, you guys got his Sith robes. And these are done very nicely. You got a ton of pleats here. All the way throughout the main uh, portion of the uh, robe. I have no complaints here. You have the hood. 
It is done very nicely. And especially from the back, I love that look, kind of like you see him in the movie. But this thing has wires throughout and a metal clip up front that you can um, attach and detach to get around the figure. Um, nothing crazy there. We'll probably look at that a little bit later, maybe on the figure. You guys are also given a pair of the swooshing blades that nobody is really a fan of in this nice red color. Um, I'm not really a fan of these just because I, I, I don't think they really translate well on the figure, but you get those. You also get a pair of uh, regular straight blades, which these are nice and long. Um, you can attach those to the lightsaber hilt. You guys will see that in a little bit. You guys do get an array of hands, but I'm not going to show you them all. I'll just show you some of my favorite. They're done um, in this nice black kind of like leather like glove look. And they look very nice. As you guys can see there, tons of detail. Um, kind of nice flow and rippling throughout. Nothing to write home about, but I like this one specifically. The force push looking hand. Um, you guys also get these pairs of, you know, swap out arms that you guys can use if you want to have um, the figure with the light up. Um, this is the LED light up or the not LED. This is the regular light up with the, the cell batteries that they used to put in the, the arms here. These are kind of, I think, a thing of the past. People don't really like using these because getting these on and off of the figure a pain and if you break that clip that's your fault and you know it's a pain to get them on and off but yeah they do articulate you can move them around you get the one with the full blade look and then you get the other one with the blade split in half there and they look cool they just look a little bit thicker than the actual hilt that you get obviously to have all of the lighting components within um, but yeah I'm never a fan of doing these just because I'm too scared to pop on and off the arms of my figures you also get two um, gauntlets here swap out gauntlets I don't know what this one is specifically for I don't know if this is just the other side or if it's a swap out um, one that you get to go without the communicator look but this one is very nice um, like I said, you guys can see in this nice um, chrome silver look, you guys get his communicator that he had in the film that he was um, calling the probe droid with and calling it in. Got nice flow here, um, leather grain texture all around, and then you got nice little bits of copper or bronze color there for some of the um, greeblies that are on his uh gauntlet communicator itself so nothing crazy there this is one of my favorite pieces here this is his micro binoculars these things look amazing guys um the paint job and the attention to detail on the sculpt itself for these are amazing to me um it's a very simple but yet um tough uh sculpt to portray if you know if uh, Hot Toys was trying to execute it and they they always do a bang up job, somebody would think that this is a simple thing to pull off, but it can uh, be very hard sometimes. You guys see the nice little gold greebly pieces, nice little clear almost inserts for the uh, lens part there. And then it's kind of like a translucent. You can see through it's kind of purple. Um, Nice oil staining and dirty and weathering all throughout this this piece. You guys can see throughout um, kind of like the crevices of the sculpt itself. The oil staining and dirtiness that he would have encountered on the sands of Tatooine out there um, while he was following Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon. But yeah, this is very nice. Again, you got that nice little clear piece there on the front for the main lens. Nice little touch of red, um, but yeah, this this thing is very cool. I see a lot of people um, having him like hold it like that, like he's looking through them. So uh, those are very nice. I think those are what these hands are actually for. Um, but and then yes, last but not least, Darth Maul's lightsaber. 
This is um, a piece that I've wanted for a very long time um, just because it is my favorite style lightsaber. I love, who doesn't love the dual wielding um, saber, right? Um, you guys have him here with uh, both pieces that you can plug in there like so. And this thing is very long, believe it or not. When you attach the, the blades to it, um, and now mine is acting all funky on camera. It's very tight sometimes at first when you guys do it. There we go. Um, but this thing is very long. You wouldn't imagine that it's that long until you see it in person. Adding the length of the actual blades itself. This thing looks very nice, guys. Nothing, nothing, uh, um, you know, was gone unnoticed here on this sculpt. You guys have all the different little knobs and switches that would uh, control the Sith's uh, lightsaber itself. You have this hole here. It comes with two little clip pieces to be able to clip onto his belt. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that myself just because I get very nervous that, you know, it might break off in that hole and then it's, you know, it's useless then. You can't really do anything about it. But guys, the chrome silver paint job finish that you get with all the little red accents on all of the buttons and switches um there is little washes in the crevices there for the black to just bring out you know all of the detail to that hilt man and it's amazing and one of my favorite parts about this is that it splits apart yes you guys can have the configuration with the um hilt split like we seen in the movie and one cool thing about that is is that when you do that hot toys has thought about giving you the end cap piece and then now you can complete the look and have a nice clean end on the lightsaber and not sure if that's coming over really well on camera but the detail is there guys you guys can see that it looks like it's cauterized and all, you know, nice and weathered on the end there. Um, but very, very nice. You guys wouldn't even be able to tell that this is a split lightsaber sculpt just because they add that and it the the um the the gapping there for the edge you wouldn't even be able to tell it looks just very very nice and very seamless so that is cool i probably won't do that just because i love the fact that it's a double um edged lightsaber so i'll probably use it in the full configuration but hot toys has thought of it all and there you guys go and these are all of the accessories that you get besides the sith speeder which we're going to take a look at right now and let's do that all right, guys, and I did forget to mention a couple of other accessories that you get. You guys get this hologram version of Darth Maul. Um, this is a pretty cool little tie-in. This was the exclusive accessory, I believe, um, but nothing crazy. I'm not sure why they would include a hologram of Darth Maul himself in his release. I would have liked it to be more maybe Darth Sidious would have made more sense but as you guys can see there down below he has some horns and you guys can kind of tell the likeness of Darth Maul there nothing crazy but you guys can have this like propped up next to maybe a Darth Sidious if you guys had that figure you guys also get the Sith probe droid that was following him around um, in the desert um, this is a pretty cool piece the paint job is done very nicely. You guys can see kind of that like uh, shimmer in the um, gunmetal area there. And then he also has streaks of dry brush silver over the top. Kind of to just, just to make it, you know, bring that sculpt to life and show that it, you know, this is a uh, metal droid. And then you got that nice purple eye right there in the center. You guys got some hints of silver too all around. And then you guys actually have these um, real cables there as well for the other smaller eyes. It does come with this antenna that you do have to place on it. It just simply pegs in right up at the top there like so. And they also include this acrylic um, 
piece, this acrylic stand piece with the base, and you guys can pop him on there like so. Nothing crazy, and then kind of maybe have him behind um, Darth Maul there, and kind of just to mimic that scene from the movie. So that is very cool. And you guys also get another acrylic um, flight pole here with a uh, bendable flight stand as well for the figure. This, These are two are for the base here that you get. You guys get this very big um, diamond shaped base that you know none of us are really fans of just because they take up a lot of space in the display and you can't put anything really besides them. But nonetheless, you guys have a big footprint here for the speeder. And for Darth Maul, you have two um, um, poles here for the flight for the for the flight stand and for the acrylic pole. I think they are interchangeable. You guys can put them in either one. Um, but we will talk about this actually. The the flight pole for the um, speeder, I'm not really a fan of because it doesn't really securely plug in. I hope that that's one thing that they do fix. Um, in the newer release when it comes out but i noticed that when i did put the speeder on there and it kind of hung to the side there like that it was actually no problem because it actually seemed like it was um you know levitating properly and it kind of like leaned back other than if it was right here just straight up then it would just be you know it kind of gives it an angle for the speeder so it kind of makes sense and maybe that is why they did that but it just doesn't make me feel really safe it feels like maybe one day it might fall over or something like that but let me know if you guys have any problems with that you guys also can take this off and this is kind of just like a uh, topper cover and this is the sands of the Tatooine Desert like we've seen in The Phantom Menace with Darth Maul being out there um, looking for um, Qui-Gon Jinn and Kenobi and then down below you guys have this very very shiny um, flooring here and this is to mimic the duel of fates battle here where him and Qui-Gon had that battle in the movie so you guys can change between both looks um, if you're using the speeder you most likely will use the sands and if you're if you have Qui-Gon and you guys want to pull off that battle you'll probably use this down below but those are all the other accessories that you get besides the speeder so we'll take a look at that right now all right, guys, and here it is, an accessory that I've been dying to see with my own eyes for a very long time. This is the Bloodfin. Yes, the Bloodfin, a.k.a. the Sith Speeder. The actual technical name is the Bloodfin. Um, this was made by... Razalon, if I'm not mistaken. This is the FC20 speeder bike. Um... You guys can fact check me down there below, but yeah, I'm not sure why Hot Toys never called it the Bloodfin, but this is pretty much just Darth Maul speeder from the movie, and guys, I always love the design of this uh, speeder here. Um, I just love that it's kind of like a crescent shape, and he just sits in there, and it just, you know, it's just a cool v design for, um, you know, a self-propelled or self-levitating um, vehicle like this. And it's just, you know, Star Wars has some of the greatest designs and character designs. And this thing, you know, from the minute I seen it in Phantom Menace with, you know, Darth Maul on it, I just always, always love the design of Darth Maul, the character and everything about it. So it is very cool to finally see this uh, with my own eyes. And Hot Toys did a bang up job recreating this thing. Um, the color and the paint job on this thing looks amazing. You guys have nice dark tones of kind of like gunmetal and brown um, all around it. And then you guys have nice washes in the crevices there as well to bring out the sculpt itself. Um, tons and tons of dry brushing over the top as you guys can see up here. 
You guys have like dirt and grime all around this thing, kind of where it would be getting scuffed up by all the grains of uh, sand and particles that, you know, he would be um, encountering in the deserts of Tatooine. And then kind of just right up front here, you guys can also see more detail of scuffing and dry brushing um, just to mimic that paint scratching effect. You guys have even kind of like bits of sand, I feel like, in there for the paint job for that nice silver um, for the, I believe these would have been axles if they if they would to go up and down, that would, um, these would go up and down as well there. But yeah, the paint job on this thing looks amazing, guys. You have the seat portion of it. It is done kind of like in a softer vinyl plastic material but it doesn't really have any give it just feels a lot less of like a brittle plastic but yeah you guys have nice paint job there for that as well kind of with like a light brown for the padded seat but then you guys also have like a wash over the top just to show it a little bit more dirtiness to it because this is not brand new off the factory line of course this has been used and weathered um, but the sculpt and the paint job on this alone looks very very nice i have no complaints and then you guys have i believe would have been the kind of the ex exhaust back there but um yeah this thing is sick guys and you guys cannot understand the size of this until you guys actually see it in hand um this thing is huge so if you don't have a lot of real estate in the collection you probably won't be using this i um unfortunately right now do not have the real estate to be having mall leaping off of it like a lot of people do which is kind of the um pose that i wanted to try to pull off and have him in there like that in the collection but i might have this just on the base and then maybe maul in front of it we'll see what happens but yeah you guys can also articulate the handlebars like so um they go up and down like that about 80 degrees um and then you guys have like real uh real wires there for the handlebars um so that's pretty cool on the screen there you guys have kind of just you know maybe controls or something that you know the the bike would be notifying the rider of but you guys can see even up here on the handlebars you guys have more of that um dry brushing effect um to mimic just the uh wear and tear on this thing so very very nice love 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 this piece and believe it or not i did not know that this original version uh lit up as well so you guys can actually pop this panel off right here and you guys probably wouldn't even be able to tell because the tolerances for it are so damn tight um you wouldn't even be able to tell but you guys pop this off and then you guys have the um triple a two triple a batteries to power it and then you have the on and off switch like so and you guys probably can't really tell because of the light box but you guys can kind of see and i think my batteries are starting to die as well which that's a bummer i don't really do this with the lights but i wanted to show you guys that it does in fact light up you guys can see there that the tail light also lights up in green i think the the uh the main screen is is not coming around too much just because I just grabbed some random batteries that I had. I just wasn't, I, I plan on taking the batteries out anyways after this review. But yeah, this pops right on. I'm assuming for the newer version, the panel on the other side right here is going to have the LED, um, sorry, the USB C plug in maybe here on the bottom or on the back we'll see i'm assuming it's on the back side though or on the other side where you wouldn't see maybe just because in the uh, promo photos we didn't really see any cables or anything like that so um but yeah that's cool that they already had the function in here for you know light up capabilities so um to have this updated to being a uh, usb plug-in is going to be just 10 times better so people don't have to fool around with batteries and stuff like that but 
you guys can also pop this on. And this is what I was talking about here. Let's do this. We'll plug the acrylic top um, rod here and then pop it on the base. And as you guys can see, it doesn't really stand straight up. Um, and I'm assuming that is just for the effect of it, you know, so that it seems like it's hanging back or trailing back like that or also trailing forward, um, but it's more back heavy. So you're obviously going to have him, you know, on it like that. But then also with the weight of the figure is what worries me, you know, is this actually going to be, you know, feasible in the display? So I'm not sure, but that is what it looks like, you know, on top of the display or on top of the flight, um, the base there for the figure. And yeah, we are now going to take a look at Darth Maul himself. All right, guys. And here we have Darth Maul himself, guys. Very, very beautiful figure. Um, this is a figure that I've been dying to have, you know, in my collection and out on the display just because he is my favorite Sith character. Um, I think he's my favorite Star Wars character too. Um, just we never really got him much longer after the Phantom Menace and Spoiler alert, you guys know why. Um, but I wish they would have done a lot more with him. As you guys can see, though, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece here. Um, and still um, holds up after all this time. You guys have his Sith uh, robes here done in a nice black. You guys have a nice ton of pleats here um, all around. And then even on, you know, the sides. These are all wires so you can bend them to your liking they all have wires embedded in them for all of the different various flaps um, but we'll look at the upper part of him for now because i know everybody wants to see that head sculpt look at that guys that thing looks amazing still to this day i love i loved this head sculpt you know what i mean um, before the newest version got announced this was the meta here for Darth Maul um, figures. And I know we have also a Clone Wars version, which I have as well. We'll do a review of that. And then hopefully what I plan to do is do a comparison between this, the Clone Wars version, and the new uh, figure when that gets released. But for now, guys, you guys can't complain. This figure right here looks badass still to date. Um, now, obviously, everybody thinks this is obsolete, but for me, I love it, you know. Um, I still I still admire this original sculpt, um, but there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of cons to this sculpt as well, you know, after seeing that newly announced um, piece, which, as you guys can see here, there is a lack of skin texture, right? So, all throughout it's kind of subtle. You can kind of see it under certain lights, but the newer one, man, it just elevates it up to a thousand. You guys can see also, you know, all of the outlining for the black on the face sculpt that a lot of people weren't fans of. And it almost seems like, you know, it was done like that purposely just to be easy, easy to paint the sculpt itself. But also as well, you know, the actual prosthetics aspect of the horns for uh, the character development on the actual film, you know, they, they like that here in this sculpt. It kind of just seems like the horns are just popping out, but, you know, we don't really see it emerging from the actual skin like, you know, um, that we're trying to portray in the movie so that newer sculpt has that as well i love the eyes though the eyes are some of my favorite you know parts to any darth maul character just that bright red orangish yellow sith eye color that we have and this guy is just he he looks pissed off like somebody pissed in his cheerios man um you guys have that uh nice um piercing on his ear as well I love, you know, Ray Park. He did such a great job as Darth Maul. Um, you know, the acting and also the choreography for the fight scenes. He did amazing. But 
guys, these spikes are actually pretty pointy too. So do be careful if you guys have this figure. I didn't think that they were that sharp, but they are freaking sharp, man. Um, but yeah, as you guys can see down here below, um, he has his leather or pleather cummerbund here. And that is where you would plug his lightsaber if you didn't want him holding it. I don't know why you would even want to do that. Um, but yeah, guys, you guys have double joints in the arms. You guys can, you know, pivot them out. Hey, I didn't do it. Um, but <laughs> yeah, this guy has very nice articulation. You know, he can go up, you know, pretty much the full way. He has a nice ab crunch, nice ab crunch to the back too, as well there for the torso and, you know, a nice twist side to side, nothing crazy there. Um, but they can do a lot. You can do a lot with this figure and you guys can see the legs pretty much have no, no restrictions, especially to the outside. Um, this guy kicks all the way out, guys. Has a nice upper, um, upper swivel up to the, to the thigh, upper thigh. Um, ratcheted, you know, for the knees all the way. You guys can do a ton of action shots. And as you guys can see already, those wires in all of the, um, the robes below are starting to act act up as we move the leg there is no real articulation i don't feel like in the foot you can kind of get it it's kind of like a semi split cut boot design right you guys can see that there on the back but then this front piece is attached to the front of the boot so there's only so much that you can do i like these they're kind of like motocross style boots they look like biker kind of boots um but hopefully with the newer ones that that gets fixed up a little bit better or maybe the rubber can seem you know a little bit softer so that we can do that as well but you guys got a nice paint job there for the boots as well and down below it's kind of given like a nice dusting feeling almost like it was hit with sand but yeah guys this is the main feast right here that head sculpt looks insane and then also to just elevate that if we pop this off they are actually also magnetic so they're easy to pop on and off and then look at that guys look at that that screaming sculpt looks so dope i don't know which one i love more i love the screaming one obviously but that that normal look just of him looking just so menacing is also badass as well but the screaming sculpt has a little bit more of a skin texture up there on the forehead as you guys can see but nowhere near you know that new one you guys get that nice depth of you know in his mouth for the tongue sitting back there there's they sculpted this very nicely. You guys can see pretty much um, the the level of depth there. And you guys have the teeth. This guy needs to brush or see a doctor ASAP. Um, he probably has gingivitis, maybe worse. Um, but this guy looks incredible, guys. You guys do also get like a little bit of skin texture there on the neck. Um I hope that they do more though, you know, for the newer one, just because they, it just seems like they, you know, put a couple of lines there. It gets the job done, but yeah, this guy can, you know, look all different types of ways just because the magnetic, you know, aspect of the sculpt, there's nothing that I don't think you can do really with this. You know, you can have him looking side to side, like, excuse me. But yeah, guys, this figure is badass. I'm happy to have it in the collection. Um, and hopefully we can do a pose or two here to close out the, sh the show here. So, And here we have this pose. I really like this one. Pretty nice and simple. This may be how I keep him in the display, but just kind of, you know, like getting ready for, for battle. All right, guys, and I take that back. This is actually how I think I'm going to set him in the display. He looks badass like this. 
have him on the base there and you guys have the speeder right behind him almost like he just had jumped off of it but he's already ready for battle and i ditched the sith robes i really like this facial expression he has kind of the force pushing hand with his speeder behind him I think I'm going to set it in this display like this for now. Let me know what you guys think about the poses. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and sticking with us. Um, be sure to stay tuned for future videos, future unboxings. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace.